Hello, today we're going to create a Lucene.net project sample. This video will support a blog post that will be listed in the description section. If you're not familiar with Lucene.net, it is a great project to implement custom search applications. Please go and check out the blog if you want more information. Uh, we want to keep this video short as it's a step-by-step -step guide, so we're going to get right into the code. Let's review our project. This is an ASP.NET web application. The data set uh, has a couple hundred records. They're employees from the Northwind database. And we have a web form where we're gonna use a grid view to display the, the records and a text box and a button to filter it. If we take a look at the a form, you see here that we have an onload event where we are binding the grid to, a, to the table that we're loading from the XML file. So let's see how this looks. Now you would normally not show all the results if you have a large data set on page load, but in this case we want to see all of the records up front so we can then uh, filter and, and verify that the search of, uh, is working correctly. So we have here, like I said, almost 300 records and nothing happens with the search button. We'll get back to it. So that is going to be our user interface. The next step is to build the search engine. Now before we can uh, get to coding, let's add a reference to the project. I'm going to use NuGet. and search for lucene.net and install the core project. See here that you have these two assemblies that are required. So our search engine will need to serve search requests. And to do that, Lucene uses an index. So let's define two methods to create an index and uh, return results. This first method, we're going to return a directory. That's the term for the index. And um, we have to choose the type of directory that we want to use. For large data sets, you can use a file system based or database based directory. If your data set is small, uh, then you can use a RAM directory, which is what we're going to use here. Uh, RAM directory will perform the best, but it obviously won't scale very well. A directory is just a um, list of documents. The documents contain uh, enhanced information uh, that has been parsed from each record of, of your um, data table. To uh, add documents to the directory, you need a couple of helpers. First one is the analyzer, which will uh, parse the strings of uh, the values of each field of your um, records and turn them into terms. These terms is what the search engine uses to identify matches to your uh, searches. The writer is what actually lets you insert documents into the. So in a uh, for each loop, we're going to process each row of our table and create a document. For it, and for each document, we're going to add fields. So, for example, we had first name. and uh, the first name value from the row. And then we have the store parameter, which just um, lets you indicate if you want to store the value, if you want to have it available as part of the result. And the index value, which will turn, uh, will tell the um, writer if we're going to analyze the contents 
of the of it of the value and turn them into terms or just take the values as is. In this case, we want to anal want them analyzed. Let's do this for the um, other fields. Now notice here that the ID is not analyzed. There's no point. It's just an identifier, so we don't want to um, process it. We do want to do that, though, for the other fields. So the last step is to have the writer add the document to the index. In line 60 and 61, we are committing the changes and flushing the changes to the directory. So our method is ready. Now let's work on the search method. This method is going to return a table so we can bind it to the grid view. Now before we can do anything else, we need an instance of our index. So I'm going to define one here. I'm going to pass it our table from the XML file. And just like in the previous example, we do need a few helpers to uh, interact with the index. So an index reader will give access uh, to the directory to an index searcher where we uh, that will actually submit the request. Now uh, we're taking a, a string with raw data from the user. Before we can pass that to uh, the searcher we need to parse whatever is in the string. So for that let's create a query parser And here's where we have the, f the first problem. Uh, this parameter should be the name of the form uh, of the field that we're going to search on. And so that is usually a problem because most of the times your users don't know anything about uh, your data set, how it's implemented or what are the names of the fields. For now, we'll just target first name, but we'll get back to this. So now we can parse the input from the user. And this, this can break, so make sure that you wrap this in a try-catch block. Now the next step is to create a collector. This is a bit strange, but the idea is that you can define uh, with these, uh, the collector, how many items you want to um, retrieve as results, and uh, if you want to sort them by relevancy. The collector is where the searcher will put the search results when uh, performing a search. So now we have our query and our collector, so we can submit our search request. And we're going to get back a set of documents that match our query. What you get then is a list of results. And each result is just an object with the ID of the document and its, and its score. So to get the document, you need to pass that ID to the searcher. And so now we have the document that we, uh, that we put in the index. So the next step is to turn that uh, document into a row of the data table. So 
we have a script for that. We're using the get field method from the document to populate a new row uh, and add and then add it to the table. So our search method is ready. Now all we have left is to bind these, well set up the event handler for the search button. and we'll bind the results to the grid. Okay, so let's see how that works. So if we search for Ken, for example, we should get results and we can use um, the standard query syntax, like for example, if you want to um, search for something that starts with Rob, you get the two values. If you want to search something that is similar to Rob, you get Rob and Bob. So uh, in the blog post, there's a link to the query syntax and you can see all, the, uh, all that is supported. But the problem that we have now is that we're only searching on first name, so if I so if I search for designer, for example, I'm not going to get any results. Fortunately, there is an easy way of solving this. That's just switching the query parser with a multi-field query parser, which instead of just one field, it takes an array of fields. So let's see that in action. Now I can either search for Ken, or I can either and I can search for designer, and I'll get results. Now the problem with the multi-query parser is that behind the scenes it just implements multiple query parsers, uh, so it may not perform very well. So let's solve this problem with a different approach. We'll revert back to the query parser, and instead we're going to create an additional field that has the contents of all the other columns. So in the index method, we're going to create one additional field, and this field is going to have the value the values of all the columns and so now we can search on one um, field that well has all the data that we care about so um, if you're worried about performance you can just leave this one as analyzed and leave all the others uh, switch all the others to not analyzed so we can compare performance um, well depending on the data set you'll get different results now search uh, works seems to be working well, but if we start drilling, you'll realize that uh, we, we're just getting started. The problem here that um, that we'll have uh, with dates is it may be counterintuitive. If you search for 19, uh, one would expect to get uh, all the birth dates in the uh, that start with 19, but um, we're actually only getting one um, based on the ID. So um, as most search uh, engines, what we do is um, search for terms and we search for the beginning of the term. So what happens here is, is that we store the value as a string and so this is seen as one term and it doesn't start with 19 so it's not a result, it's not a, result uh, not a match. So if we do uh, starts with 19, uh, we're getting all the items that have that's, that have IDs um, with 19 um, as the starting numbers, uh, but we're still not getting this. So um, you would, in this case, you would say, well, um, how about 
using the while card in the beginning. And here we're going to get an exception. And that's because uh, by default, the, um, a while card is not allowed as the beginning of the string. And that's because it takes a lot more processing power to find something that begins with a while card. However, we can uh, turn this feature on. So let's do that. The query parser. There is an allow leading wildcard. So now we should be able to say, give me everything that contains a 19. Now what we're saying here is, uh, give me terms that end with 19. So this should give us the right results, something that contains 19, which is pretty much the entire data set. So we're allowing these queries without giving it too much thought, but this could have a, um, uh, a deep impact in your search application if you have uh, a lot of records. So um, there, there is really no easy way to fix it. Um, we have a couple of different approaches. Uh, we can use, uh, instead of storing the value as a string, we can store it as a numeric value. And we'll review that in another video. But I, I wanted to finish this video by showing you an easy way of solving this without actually uh, using any features from the, from the product. But instead, what we're going to do is uh, store the birth date value um, and, uh, and separating the dates within, well, the, the day, the month, and the year from the date as um, different terms. So then we can easily get search results without using wildcards. So we're going to go back to the index. And here what we're doing is um, creating a, a date value that includes the raw date and uh, also um, replaces the slash with a space, slash space. That turns the, the individual portions of the date into different terms. And then they can be uh, targeted individually. So in the full text field, I'm going to replace birth date with a new date. So now if we search for 19, we get uh, results for um, uh, well, records that have 19 as a term. And so you also get the same results for any other number. Okay, we're gonna close out the session now. I think we've covered enough uh, for an introduction. I would appreciate any feedback and uh, let me know if you have anything that you want to cover on the next video. Thanks and uh, you'll have the, the project that we worked on as a download in the resources section of the post. Thank you and see you on the next one.